What's up, everybody? It's JT Sports back to you guys with another video. In this video, I'm here with my 2019 NFC West predictions. Going to be predicting who's going to win the NFC West division, who's going to be the worst team in this division. I'm going to be ranking these teams in order, worst to first, who's going to be number one, two, three, and four. And the order that I'm doing this, I'm doing this by my 2020 2019 NFL work predictions for the 2019 NFL season. A card to that playlist will be popping up. So you guys can go check those out. You can watch the whole entire playlist or you can just watch the videos of the certain teams that you guys want to watch. So that's the order that I'm doing this. So if you guys are going to be wondering where I got this record from, I got the record that I got when I did each team's prediction. So this NFC West division, normally. We could say that it's pretty much going to be either the L.A. Rams or the Seattle Seahawks. But this division is interesting. You got Arizona, the hiring of Cliff Kingsbury. They also drafted Kyler Murray. That's going to be something interesting to watch there. Then you got Seattle. Um, Seattle, they're pretty much basically the same team they were last season, despite losing Doug Baldwin. I still think the Seattle Seahawks are going to be a pretty good team, a pretty solid team. Then you got the San Francisco 49ers. They are one of the most improved teams going into the season. A lot of people still have their question marks over Jimmy Garoppolo. And also on the defense side of the ball, they're very good. They have a very good pass rushing unit. They got D Ford, Nick Bosa, and D Ford Buckner there. They also signed Jason Verrett and free agency, who is a very good corner when he's able to stay healthy. Pair him on the opposite side of the field from Richard Sherman. I think that's going to be a pretty good secondary for the San Francisco 49ers. The only hole is really safety. And also they signed linebacker Quan Alexander as well, who was one of the better linebackers in the NFL when he's able to stay healthy. So let's get into it at number four. I have the Arizona Cardinals. A lot of people are overhyping this Arizona Cardinals team. Let's just call it what it is. This Arizona Cardinals team isn't really good. And last season when I did these predictions, it was Arizona Cardinals fans calling me retarded because I had them as the worst team in this division. And they called me an idiot. They said they were going to go 13-3 and three, or they were going to go 10-6 and six, and they were going to make it to the playoffs. And what happened, the Arizona Cardinals ended up being one of the worst teams in the NFL last season. And I still think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL this season. And although I had them at 2-14, and 14, I don't really want people to pay attention to the record so much. I really want people to pay attention to the order that I have these teams because I think that's probably the most important. But this Arizona Cardinals team, they are the worst team in, in this division. And the offensive line is going to be a huge problem. I know they added some guys on the offensive line, but the guys that they added aren't really good. Like, guys like um, Marcus Gilbert, he's not even – this dude hasn't even played in a full NFL season in, like, a whole entire decade. The last time I believe this guy – played in the whole entire NFL season was like in 2009 or something like that. So their offensive line isn't really the best. It's a little bit better, but it's still one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. Then their best wide receiver is Larry Fitzgerald on the playoff caliber team or Super Bowl contending team. Larry Fitzgerald is a wide receiver two or three at best. And then they got a guy like Christian Kirk. I really like him a lot, but you're counting on rookies. A basically young offense to, you know, contribute and produce. And I think that's a lot to ask for. I think a lot of people are overhyping Cliff Kingsbury in this college offense because of the success that Chip Kelly had. But people forget that Chip Kelly had a top 15 roster when he became the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles a few years ago. And this air raid offense, a lot of people are talking about how it's new, it's different. Nobody has seen this before. If you watch Brett Coleman's video, he breaks down the Air Raid offense and Cliff Kingsbury's offense. It's nothing really new. A lot of teams have version of the Air Raid offense in their playbooks as well. So a lot of these defensive coordinators, they're going to be able to find a way to stop it. And, you know, this Arizona Cardinals team, I think they pretty much are the worst team in this division. Shouldn't be too much of a debate there. At number three, I had the Seattle Seahawks. I have them with a 9-7 record. I believe that this season, you know, they're still one of the better teams in this division. They're still going to be one of the best teams in the NFL. But I think they struggle out the gate a little bit because they're going to have a young wide receiver in DK Metcalf. And I don't really know if I trust Tyler Lockett as the number one wide receiver. So it normally takes rookie wide receivers a couple of weeks to adjust to the NFL game. We saw that last season with guys like DJ Moore 
and Calvin Ridley. It, it took those guys a couple of weeks to get going, but those guys started going after about week nine of the NFL season. It's going to take DK Metcalf a while, but once he gets going, I think Seattle's going to be a lot better on the offensive side of the ball. They also have a pretty solid rushing attack as well. Chris Carson is one of the most underrated running backs in the NFL. He had a pretty good season last season. The offensive line looks to be improved also. And this Seattle Seahawks team, I think they struggle out the gate because of trying to find consistency with the wide receiving core. But they do have Russell Wilson, so they will be competitive in those games. But overall, I still think this is a playoff team, and I have them at number three here. At number two, I have the San Francisco 49ers. Had them with a 10-6 record in my 2019 NFL predictions. When I did my prediction for the San Francisco 49ers, and a lot of people are probably going to be upset that I have the San Francisco 49ers here at number two. But I believe that they are, talent-wise, the second-best team in this division. I mean, these guys have a very talented roster. You have Jimmy Garoppolo. A lot of people might be like, he's not improving. But look, we out of the small sample size that we've seen from Jimmy Garoppolo in last season before he got injured, he was solid. He's one of the highest-paid quarterbacks in the NFL. So the San Francisco 49ers, they wouldn't be paying this guy the money that he's getting if they didn't believe and that they weren't confident in this guy's abilities to be that guy for the San Francisco 49ers. So the fact that people keep on saying Jimmy Garoppolo is unproven, I know that. But look at the money that he's making. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a pretty solid quarterback in the NFL. Then you look at the targets that he has, Debo Samuel, Jalen, the dude Jalen Hurd from Baylor, then you also have a pretty solid halfback team. I mean, they have a lot of talented guys at a running back position. You have Matt Breida, who at one point in the NFL was leading the NFL in rushing. Then you also have a guy at Telvin Coleman, who I believe is an RB1, and I believe he's going to be a very good halfback for the San Francisco 49ers. He's probably going to be their lead back. He's probably going to get the bulk of their carries there. And then a big reason why I'm excited, why I have the San Francisco 49ers Rated at number two to finish in this division is because of how good their defense is. Their defense is very improved. They signed Jason Verrett, who is a very good player when he's able to stay healthy. They improved the pass rushing core. They got Nick Bosa, D Ford. You also have D Ford's Buckner there. So that's pretty much one of the best pass rushing trios in the NFL. Then they signed Quan Alexander, who is one of the better linebackers in the NFL when he's able to stay healthy. So it, I, I'm very high on the San Francisco 49ers team. I believe they're going to surprise a lot of people. And also when you look at Kyle Shanahan, he is one of the more innovative offensive minds in all of the NFL. So I have them at number two here. I believe that this San Francisco 49ers team is going to be able to compete. And they're going to be able to make it to the playoffs. At number one, we already know I have the Los Angeles Rams. Have them finishing with a 12-4 record. And although Todd Gurley, he's going to be taking a step back. They're going to be lessening his carries, trying to keep him fresh throughout the season. Daryl Henderson, he's not a guy just to overlook. This guy was very explosive for Memphis. I watched a lot of Memphis games. And this dude, Daryl Henderson, he is a dude who is a threat to take it back to the house. Every single time this guy touches the ball, I mean, he has power, but he also has a looseness as well. He can make you miss in the open field. Very explosive runner, and he reminds me a lot of Todd Gurley coming out of his early days when he was playing for Georgia. Very explosive back. And, I mean, this guy is also very powerful as well. He can also do some things in the receiving game. And with an innovative offensive mind like Sean McVay, he's going to find a way to utilize Todd Gurley and also keep him fresh and also find ways to utilize Daryl Henderson as well. And then also when we look at the wide receiving core, they're getting back Cooper Cup. They also have Robert Woods. Reynolds was also a very solid wide receiver. They also have Brandon Cooks there as well. The offensive line is improved. Then you got Jared Goff there. So this LA Rams offense is going to be still one of the better offenses in all of the NFL. On the defensive side of the ball, I think they're going to take a little bit of a step back, even though most of the teams that they play this season don't really have any prolific offenses. Probably the best offenses that they're going to play is probably the Pittsburgh Steelers and Seattle 
for some teams to name off the top of my head, the Cleveland Browns as well. So overall, those are pretty much the only offenses that should really give the defense fits. The defense is going to take a step back. They did lose in Donovan Sue. They did lose their starting safety. They lost their starting linebacker, Mark Barron. So those are three starters. Those are going to be three holes that they're going to have to figure out who's going to be filling those spots. But overall, this is still the best team in this division. I believe that the San Francisco 49ers and the Seattle Seahawks, they could very well give the L.A. Rams a run for this number one spot. But overall, I believe the L.A. Rams are the best team in the NFC West. And I believe that they are overall one of the best teams in the NFC conference as a whole. So this is my prediction for the NFC West division let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section down below also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more nfl videos and content and thanks for watching